So in the last one, we left it off where if we type in the wrong password and we go to log in, we get this error here. And that's because we don't have any validations in our form, meaning our form is not checking anything really. Uh, it's just kind of submitting that data. Uh, so let's actually check some stuff before the data becomes valid. So when we look at our view, before this is actually called, uh, we wanna actually check to make sure that the username and password um, are actually real users and the real user's password before we actually run this stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do now is in our form, the first thing we're gonna do is our, we're gonna check our username. And to do that, we do def clean underscore the field name that we def defined up here. So in this case, we're gonna do username. Right, so this is actually going off of the field name up here, clean underscore the field name that this is. So this could be anything, right? If you have a bigger form and it says like you have a search box or you have um, like a drop down menu or something like that, clean whatever that name is will allow you to do what we're about to do. Okay, so we're gonna do username equals to self dot cleaned data, or sorry, yeah, cleaned underscore data dot get and we're gonna get the username. All right, so this is getting from the clean data, um, it's getting the username, and then we're going to try. Well, now we need to try to see if this username is actually within our user objects. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go from django.contrib.auth, we're gonna import get user model, and we're gonna go user equals to get user model up there okay so this is getting the user model that would be related to kind of like how this stripe model works um, this is actually getting the user model itself uh, this is the suggested way from django on how to get that user model um, especially if you change your user model or or you change it and you customize it which we're not going to get into in this one but um, anyways this is a good way to grab that user model now what we're gonna do is go user equals to user.objects.get username equals to username. So username is a way that we can actually get an object. So, so this user model definitely has a field called username and we're getting the username that has been submitted. And if that does not exist, it would run an exception. So the exception is except user dot does not exist. So this user dot, this is the model, and then does not exist is a common exception error. And if that's the case, we're gonna raise a validation error, forms dot validation error. And then we'll say, are you sure you are registered? we cannot find this user otherwise outside of the try loop we're going to return username because we still want to send back the actual username now this is where you would if you wanted to make changes to whatever they submitted this is where you could do that this would be a way to do that there's plenty of ways to do it but this would be a nice and easy way if you wanted to say username plus 100 or for some reason uh, you would, well, that would have to be a string, but you would you could do that there and then that's what would be returned on your view on something like this. But we're not gonna do that. So let's get rid of it. Okay, cool. So now let's test this out. Um, back into our login. I'm gonna write in a user, uh, uh, I'm gonna write in a username that does not exist so I got rid of the three, hit login, and now it says, are you sure you are registered? We cannot find this user. Perfect, that's what we wanted to see. That's a validation error. Notice it didn't submit it any, or anything. We didn't get that other error that we saw, uh, and that's because it actually was not called, like form is valid was not called. All right, so back in our view, this was never run. This block of code is never run. Instead, this right here prevented it from going through. So the next one is checking the password. Now checking the password is only slightly more complicated. So what we're gonna do here is def clean password self. And we need the password and username this time. So username equals to self.clean username. This will call this right here. 
And so for sure, we're definitely gonna get the clean username in there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and also run um, username or password, sorry, password equals self dot cleaned data dot get password. Actually, you know what? Let's let's keep this a little consistent. I'm going to put this as username here. Okay, so we've got our password and our username. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to check whether or not this user is the correct password. So what I'm going to do now is try another try and I'll do another user just like what we did up here. And then I'm going to see if uh, the password is correct. So user.check, well actually, we'll just raise that exception again. So user dot does not exist. We raise this exception. So if user, then we'll say user.check password of password. So we're actually going to want to put this in the if not user check password. So this is going to give me a true or false right here. And that's getting that user. And then we're going to do raise forms dot validation error invalid password. And then we're going to return the password. Okay. So this is actually a little bit more of a mess than it should be. Uh, realistically, we want to use the clean username like I was about to do, but I want to show you that you could write the whole thing out like this on just clean password. Like you could put, you could just get rid of this completely uh, and just use clean password and it would have similar type of validation errors, but it's better to have them separate like it, this. This is not great because if we go back into our form, and we try an invalid user and a password, it says it twice. Uh, so that's where we've got this error now. This doesn't work for us. So what we need to do is instead of raising this, we're just gonna say user equals to none. And then I'm also gonna make that any exception. It doesn't have to be just not exist. Just, it's just an exception, any exception whatsoever. So now in our if clause, if user is not none and the password is false, right? So if it's not true, then it's gonna raise this. So the user exists is what this is saying. And if it's not true, if it's not the correct password, then raise invalid password. The other part is else or L if user is none, we're just gonna say pass. And then else, if it's not any of those two things, then we're gonna return the password. So when we say pass here, that's because we don't actually want to send the password if the user is none. And this is sending the password. This is sending nothing because uh, it's actually passing. So it's actually not going to return anything. So nothing will actually go forward. Um, all right. So uh, we could also raise the validation error like, like please uh, check your user or something like that. Um, we could also say that there, but it's kind of redundant because this is checking the user as well. Um, all right, so let's try this out. Load up our login page again. You might need to restart your server. And I just hit control C a lot to cancel it out. Uh, all right, so my server is working now. So let's get rid of the username, hit login, not registered. Okay, great. Get the username, wrong password, invalid password, perfect. Now if I use the right password, it logs it in as we see up there. Um, all right, great. So that means our form validation errors are there and they work and they work very nicely. It's, um, uh, it, it might be a little complicated on how this all worked, but hopefully not. Hopefully this all makes sense. Um, I'll quickly go over it again. Now on every form, when you run uh, form is valid, it's going to do a validation, which validation is going to go through to make sure everything's what's called clean. Um, so it's getting in here, we're overriding the default or actually adding to the default of clean data. Um, and we're going to get this clean username 
right? So we're going to get the clean data. We're going to get the data from the form that's being passed through. We're going to get the username there. And then we're going to see whether or not the, uh, the user actually exists based off of that username. If it doesn't exist, it's going to raise this form a validation error on that specific field, not the entire form. And then after that, we're going to check the password. Now to check the password, we have to have the username and password. And then we have to get that user object, which is what we do here. If that user does not exist, they'll just say none. Now, if the user exists, which is what this is checking, and the password is not correct, then it's going to raise this this validation error. If the user does not exist, it's not going to return anything. And then finally, if those aren't true, then it will return passwords. So meaning else is if the user exists and has the correct password, it's going to return the password. Um, so that's where that is right there. Uh, you could possibly refactor this code right here, but I think this works pretty well and it also explains what's going on uh, with it very well. All right, so that is running form validations. Now you could do these same type of validations on any types of forms. You don't have to do it on this specific form. There is another form called a model form, which, which uses a model like user Stripe, uh, which is something we get into in other projects. but. Uh, for now, we see that this is login form. We've got our form, and this works out great for us. And then finally, we used a basic HTML form, and notice that this form as P, uh, what that also does is it will show those validation errors, right? Uh, here, let me log out real quick. Uh, loading the service. Okay, there we go. So what it does is using form as P, will still show these errors. If I did not use it specifically like this, the error might not actually come up. Uh, and just that's because you will see other ways of how to use forms and stuff like that. But that's one way to make sure that these errors actually do show and they write out the, the validation error that we want it to, right? So we actually set those errors or what that says here and here. All right, so if you have any questions on this, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.